Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Ace and I got another Sanctum 2 video here for you. Spoiler alert. Alright, that's out of the way. Anyway, I will discuss the ending of Sanctum 2 while also showing you guys the ending. So if you don't know what's up, you can actually see the ending and draw your own conclusion. Or just listen to what I have to say about the ending if you already have seen the ending. And see if you agree or disagree because I do have a definite opinion about it. Now, on top of that, I will also show you guys how to beat the final wave. Quite literally, the final wave. The final map, the final level, is actually just one giant wave of... Oh my god, this is not gonna go too well. Oh, I am almost dying. Oh god, those are multiple bosses. What am I supposed to do? So we're going to embrace that fact. As you can see on the screen, annotations will guide you either to gameplay... Which you can do if you then want to know a little bit more about my decisions about weapons and towers. You can skip a little bit back. Otherwise, enjoy the gameplay and uh, enjoy my amazing and so on and so forth. Otherwise, you can also click on the other annotation and dive into the ending and my thoughts about it. So here we go. Start game. Swamp. The end. I will not activate any kind of feats of strength. Because a CPU you can overclock, my brain you cannot, so I can only process so many things. And if I make it harder for myself, I might stop talking at some point. So I can redirect my energy, my power, to winning the game instead of failing. So there you go. I will be playing as Simo. I would recommend playing as Simo or Sky if you are on your own. Um, but Simo is doing it for me. I will use my skin as well. This is his regular. This is his skin. Bit of an annoying placement to have it right in front of his face, but, you know, there you go. I'll be using the sniper rifle, the SMG. I will not use the lightning tower. I will switch it out for a violator. I will be using a Gatling gun, focus, and a slowing tower. I'll be using the perks aesthetic discharge, marksman, and exposure rounds. It should pretty much speak for itself. I am a high single target damage dealer. So, when it comes to AoE, I have a weak side. This is why I have the lightning, uh, at least the static discharge. Why I switched away from the lightning tower or any kind of splash tower, besides Keros, which is just a slow tower, is because a lot of the enemies that we are facing are heavies. Super heavies, bosses, hoovers. Uh, a lot of AoE da damage is not going to really cut it. I want to break down those heavy use, uh, th these heavy units without having to worry about too much when it comes to... Uh, to these little minions, which I can quite easily take out with Static Discharge with my SMG, or if I hit a, a sniper shot with a high critical damage, including Marksman, I do about 5k damage if it's uh, starting to build up quite nicely. So a proc that happens 2.5k, it does kind of, you know, tick on. And of course the Gatling Gun will take uh, the, the small ones with relative ease anyway. The Violator is just because of the high damage burst shots that it can do. Just to soften up or take out uh, any people that might get to do the core because the range is insane, which I love. So it pretty much should speak for itself. So without any further ado, let's go. Once again, guys, spoiler alert. And you know what you may not know? The very first time when I dropped in here or when I started this, I was like, wait, where am I supposed to go? But uh, the giant hole kind of gives it away. If you have double jump with you as a perk or if you have the double jump character... Um, which you can actually give the double jump perk and then you have a triple jump just something to note You can actually pick up these mines that you can see But I'm on my own. I don't have any feats of strength on so I don't find them to be necessary But they will definitely give you quite a uh, an easy edge if you are with multiple people or uh, you just really want to maximize everything I'm just gonna pick up all the, the monies and of course the tower bases Did I just miss it No. There you go do a few runs as you can see, this score is a little less uh, built in and a little bit more natural by the looks of it. So there you go. That's 4,000 health. And most of you guys would directly jump here to the end and be building right over here. You do not want to do that under any circumstances. There are multiple bosses, as you may have known already, that will destroy tower bases. Now the laser guys you can leave alone. They will not shoot you. Uh, unless you get too close. You can actually just run behind them, allow them to shoot you into the abyss. And then you can just take him uh, down from behind without having to worry about them. Or you can just leave them alone and rely on your towers. Because the focus towers, once they get going, they burn bosses down. Which is why I love them. 
Um, on top of that, the two bosses that are a problem are those giant Hulk-like monsters that will walk up to a tower base, one-shot it, including the tower, and they are done for. Those are going to be the main problem, especially the first one. The first one is our main issue. Once he does his thing, we are pretty much done. So we don't want him to do his thing. I'm starting off with a, a left to right uh, mace, because this first wall is my buffer wall. You may say, buffer wall? As I stated, that Hulk-like boss is probably just going to walk up and hit stuff. If I have a buffer wall, he has to break through that first, before he actually manages to break my, um, well, to break my real maze, right? That kind of makes sense, I hope. Alright, no, I don't want to do that. Put it down here, diagonal. There you go. Trying to build as efficient as I can to build uh, to keep as much building blocks left while still finishing my maze like this. And I will have a very good reason for that. Alright. That should do it. Let's go to the right here. Alright. I have 14 blocks left. I think I can actually maximize a little bit more. Can take this one out. Can take this one out without messing up the an amazing. Alright, we should be good. We have 16 blocks left. First of all, I will make my own personal base here. Um, do I want to do this like here? No, I don't want to do that right here. Has to be a right. Ma uh, I want my I want my own personal base, on which I can stand, and not worry about anything. So I can just stand here without having any worry about any ranged characters or anything hitting me. Because normally, if you stand on the the lines here. Walkers can still hit you and bash you around. Hoover's gonna get close to you and shockwave you. But because the pathing... Um, actually, no, I have to build on the other side. Because the pathing will directly go here to the right. They will not focus on me. I will never be in range of their shots. And I should just enjoy some casual freedom. So there you go. This will also help me to buffer for a buffer. Because I've still got 12, sh 12 tower blocks, right? So what I'm gonna do is... I'm just going to put them down. That's all I'm going to do. Just putting them down. And actually build a few here. For very good reason as well. Because there will be a pre-buffer to my buffer. And this is like just a buffer. A pre-buffer to the pre-buffer. If you like. Because I can just stand here. Hoovers will go down here. I can directly start shooting them uh, from here. Because Hoovers are a priority target. Because they soak damage from the front. Uh, wasting your damage on other targets. If you can take them out, it would be nice. Same thing for Bobbleheads. Your priority targets are giant boss that will mess your shit up, then Bobblehead, then Hoover, and then pretty much free for all. So that's your, your target priority list if you were wondering about that. Just making sure everything looks fine. Still got three spots left. I have a big buffer, which buys me a lot of time. So I might actually want to build a little bit more. Let's see, do I want to actually build up a bit of better defense perhaps yeah i'm just gonna fortify the wall right here i want to do that can i do that hmm doesn't look like i can actually do that because this particular block is in the way so i'm just gonna soak that up and just use it in a, a, a my pre-buffer wall of pre-bufferness i suppose all right I don't necessarily want to block any paths with walls. So I might want to just put one in front of there. So my super base is truly super. I don't ever have to worry about anything then. Alright, let's add one over there. Two left. Let's add one over there. And add one over there. That should be good. Because then I can also just run over and jump over stuff and kite things around. I just have to worry about air units. So let's start building then. I'm going to put one giant slow at the beginning. Three lasers around it. Because they will get more benefit out of focus. I have violators that I want to put a little bit to the side-ish. Um, and a little bit on the back because they do have a large range. So I do want to try and benefit from that. I don't have any AOE. I do have Gatling guns which I definitely want to use. To my abilities, or to my benefit, I should say. Let's see. Let's choose one. Yeah, that's one. This one here. Got three Gatling guns. I can use another Violator. 
just to have a, a little bit more burst damage and also they are able to hit the core without too much of a fuss so let's see that's at that at one in the front line would actually be good because then we can actually start sniping directly as they spawn all right now i'm just going to upgrade everything to level three and as you can see i have plenty of money left if you are on your own you can upgrade everything to level three and still have some left to overcharge I do definitely want to overcharge my uh, slow tower to hit a lot more. I want to buff it uh, to range 6 if I can, if I have enough money for that. I think I have. Should be at least. Right. Violators are being buffed. Let's make them really violating. Violating. -ing. Makes them uh, pretty damn powerful. I will try to overcharge them as well. Up to 10k damage because right now, as you can see, it should get even more range and a nice damage buff. It's 5000 damage, but when I start overcharging, it skills quite quickly. Actually, do I want to have my. I don't want to have my turret over here because it's a waste of range. So I don't want to do that. May want to put a little bit more in the back, perhaps, as a safety measure if something gets through. As well as to soften up the front line. As if I believe at level 3. The range should be just good enough. Will it be? Almost. It was almost enough. So it's, But this particular Gatling gun should be fine. Alright. Everything level 3. We're slowly getting there. Takes a little while. But I still have plenty of money left. Right. Violators look pretty damn badass, I have to admit. Once they're level 3, as you can see. And as you can see, the damage does scale quite efficiently as well. And the range is just amazing on them. Which I know the core will be protected by the violators if there is somebody that does get through. You can actually get a perk and decide the priority that the towers have. Which you could also do for violators and then just basically pick off the weakest as a good snipe attempt. Do want to buff this range up to level 6 or to 6 range I mean. As you can see around me the spiral that turns is basically the range indicator. Which pretty much should uncover the entire maze. There we go. Let's see if anything is not level 3 yet. This particular laser isn't yet. Right now he is. Level 3. Level 3. Level 3. Level 3. Level 3. Alright, everything is level 3. Still 400 left. Let's put the Gatling gun above 100. You as well, good sir. 20, 25. 20, 25. There we go. So it's time to put our positions. Or take our positions and press enter. Once again, remember the priority. Your target priority. And yes, that thing just moved. Oh god. I can see the violator is already shooting. And yes, that is a violator. Look how loaded that armored heavy already is. This is why I took violators in. It's so amazing. Just put on some poison. Make sure that they uh, benefit from your debuff perk that I have selected. As you saw, the exposed rounds. Just add some poison to these ranged characters as well. And now just no scope. As you can see, it does so much damage once you get some rapid succession. And it does more damage. 5.4. I can just take out one of these armored heavies if I actually didn't miss there. But as you can see, 5.3, 6 point. So much damage. And this is why I have taken Simo specifically. But I do have to pay attention to these air units because they just get the drop on you. And you don't necessarily want that. I'm just going to do a little bit of splash damage. Add a little bit of poison as well. Get those annoying air units out of the way. There you go. This should do it. Let's take out the big one. The, oh god. The first boss, the the lady hoover, the queen hoover I mean. Should be coming soon. There you go. As I say, it spawns. There she is. Hoover a queen. Just gonna try to do a little bit more damage. I can't really target her just yet. Just gonna put a little bit more poison into the systems of these very annoying um, mobs. I'm just gonna also make sure to put some poison on the queen once I get the chance. 
and on some other targets as I will try to snipe her and bring her down as efficiently as I can. Now as I do this, I just don't really have to worry about her just yet. Just make sure that I hit as much targets as I can because the bobbleheads, actually I find I have a higher priority because I can't really dive into the line because then I will get destroyed by all the minions. But because the way that I build, she has to turn her back to me and this is my opportunity to do massive damage to her. But I do have to watch out for any air units though. Alright. Should be good. Ow! And as I say that, there's actually a range unit. I stood a little bit too much in the front. And that's my bad. Oh, I'm just gonna jump in. I'm a little bit hesitant. I just wanna take out the Hoover Queen. Alright, let's take her out. Come on, there you go. Normally I take my time, but apparently I built my, uh, my little base wrong. Should have been a three uh, sideways but I uh, messed that up or I quite underestimated the range of these guys which apparently seems to be the case holy hell die already guy all right second boss has arrived this is the boss that I was talking about the Walker Patriarch this is the boss that makes my life a living breathing hell you piece of incoherent I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can hit his weak spots and as you can see if I do hit his weak spots he is going to down quite efficiently it seems that my pre-buffer is quite effective as it's now down as long as I can draw his attention I should be able to take him out come on come on violators violators come on where are you there you go and the maze is still intact we just won the game this is like the high risk of, uh, of the build that I have. This particular first boss. And as you can see, I can just take a break. I can take a holiday if I wanted to. I just have to take sure the bubble heads are taken out. And the air units. And that's all I pretty much have to do. Yes, the maze has been opened. But now this is basically my secure my secure uh, base of solitude and awesomeness. As you can see, I just did a double kill because of that spastic uh, chest charge. Hoover is even just melting down. So as you can see, once you get this first boss down, it's quite effective. Now, another boss. This is a boss that's indeed very, very annoying. But as you don't, if you don't get close to him and just take out all these priority targets, you should be just fine. Because poison ticks quite effectively on him. And, if, and as long as you don't uh, say anything to him or don't look at him the wrong way, you should be just fine as I try to hit the um, soakers. Oh, so much damage. I love it. He's going to shoot his laser to me and not to my base. I got a little, probably a little bit too close. There we go. I actually got too close to the blast radius. I thought he already shot. But uh, now that I'm pretty much not doing anything, I'm not really worried. He didn't hit my maze. My maze is still intact. And as you can see, he's actually melting quite efficiently. Just have to make sure that I take out the soakers. Because they will soak in quite a lot of damage. And that's not what I want. Oh god, it's getting close. Alright. Super heavy, start melting. As I will focus. Oh god, no! No, uh. No, he just blowed my defenses to the hell. This is bad, I got too close. No, he just hit the core. Alright, I'm okay with that. put in some poison let's focus those bloody soakers apparently because of the boss's uh, extent the brood mothers are uh, the brood mothers are getting through as well right, just take out the soaker very finely drops looks like the the mess that I live uh, or left is a little bit too big and there's another boss which I have to focus down as soon as I can. First I have to take out the soakers. So the small ones are not getting through. So what are we dealing with? Yes. The walker patriarch. As long as I can take him out. Or kite him around. We should be good. I just have to make sure that I don't get shockwaved. By the beloved, beloved queen. Which she is looking to do. Oh god there she is. If she hits me I'm dead. But he's going to look for focus for me. But I also have to worry about... The small guys because they are suicidal. 
And as you can see, now that I have a lot more space, because my maze actually got destroyed, he is so eager to focus me, I just put poison on him and do so much damage. And I don't even have to worry about it. There you go, he drops. Only the queen left to go, and she is just melting. As I will put on some poison on her to make her melt even fast. Faster is the word I was looking for. Yeah, my maze is still intact. The buffer wall has helped. There's still actually a lot of buffer blocks ready that I can just use. And if you want to deal with the super heavy, you just have to make sure that you point away his laser. And move out of the way of the race. Blast radius. Oh god. Because it's quite big. But as you can see, you can just spam it. There's nobody else here. You can just have a casual chat. You know, discuss the meaning of life. Keep your poison going and just wait until he aims at you. And then find your opportunity to make his life a living and breathing hell from behind. Goodbye, sir. And that is how I won my last map. With, of course, also the feat of strength. So there you go. Now that I haven't used the feat of strength. It got a little bit tricky. But uh, my buffer wall, my inbuilt defense of my defense worked flawlessly so that's how i did it of course there's going to be way easier ways of doing it but this is how i did it so there you go and so i will continue to go to the ending all right press any key and this is the ending you think oh god i have to fight and you have to go you see the credits rolling in it's quite an awesome image and then you're like oh wait this is it this is the ending. But then you look up. And this is was the giant this was this is the giant thing that we saw. He's like looking at me. Saying hello. Look how big it is. Unfortunately, this is the entire ending, guys. This is the Sanctum 2 ending as it is right now without any DLC. Now the reason why I'm not happy with this is quite obvious. And the reason why Um it has been done like this is also quite obvious. The reason why it has been done like this is because to keep the storyline open for the DLC. We are most likely going to have to fight this giant bastard. And I'm quite happy with that. But personally, I hate open endings like this. And I just have to stand here, seeing this giant monster of destruction walk into the city. And I can't do anything besides watching the credits. It's like almost a subconscious way... Of knowing exactly who to hate <laughs> for this ending. I hate open endings. It's it does gi it doesn't give me a sense of closure, which could be a design uh, choice. But I find that if there's a storyline which is definitely presented, you should at least give us a good ending in the main game. DLC should not be part of the main game's storyline. DLC is new storylines, you know, new things to add to the game. This right now doesn't feel like a complete game. And I hate that. If you guys can understand that. It's not a, it, it, the ending is not done. It's not a complete game. And I am infuriated. I just dislike such things. I hate open endings in movies. I hate open endings in other games. And this is probably the most open ending of all open endings that I've ever experienced in all games that I may or may not have played. And I'm really, I'm almost disappointed even that they have done this like this. Because the entire Sanctum game is wonderful. I love Sanctum 1. I've loved Sanctum 2. You know, the Sanctum 2 is definitely an upgrade from Sanctum 1. But then they give me such a bitter aftertaste. Just to um, perhaps, uh, well, justify their DLC content. But personally, in my opinion, I believe that DLC content should be addition to. Not, uh, you know, um, be a part of the main game, if that makes any sense. It should add to the game, not finish the game, if you like. And I just uh, I, I just find it unfortunate that they have decided to go with an ending like this. But, you know, I, I can understand why they did it, but that's pretty much it. And before I repeat myself, that's the only thing I hate about Sanctum 2 right now. And that is that, well, the ending is so incredibly open... And I just don't like that. Perhaps other people are disagreeing with me. And this is why I, you know, I need you guys to comment below and you know, let me know what you think. Do you like open endings? 
don't you like open ended? Perhaps you hate them. I hate them personally. I understand it. But I still hate it. <laughs> That's kind of uh, the conclusion of my opinion. And yeah, it, it, it also feels so bittersweet let's be able to watch an awesome boss go by that has been taunting me the entire last wave and then I can't even do anything to him until the DLC probably hits. Also a bit of a, a bitter thing if you like. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys still enjoyed the game because it's still a good game. You should check it out on Steam. It's quite cheap. And there's definitely replay value to be had because there's a lot of feet of strength to be unlocked. Still things to be unlocked in general as well when it comes down to perks and weaponry. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And of course, as always, I will catch you guys next time. Take care.